When I first saw these cool fighters soar across the screen in Star Wars Ahsoka, I went, hang on, hang on, are those E-Wings? Are they, are they? Even though their appearance doesn't quite match the old school Legends version that appeared in the Dark Empire comics decades ago, it definitely appears to be an E-Wing. And I kind of really like this version of the E-Wing. The New Republic E-Wing is a space superiority starfighter and fills many of the same roles as the good old T-65 X-Wing. However, the E-Wing is supposedly faster, more heavily armed, and tougher than the X-Wing. The E-Wing first appeared in the Dark Empire comics and is meant to possibly replace the X-Wing in many of its roles. However, in the old Legends lore, it never really did. So why is that? Is the E-Wing really better than the X-Wing? Why did so many New Republic pilots stick with the X-Wing? Let's use some of my digital models and some CG junk to dig in deep as to whether the E-Wing really is superior to the X-Wing. First, let's do a brief recap about the nature of the X-Wing and why it's so good. The X-Wing, unlike the Empire's swarms of TIE Fighters, has shielding, so it's better protected. X-Wings are comparable in speed to TIE LN fighters, but not as maneuverable. I believe it has superior weapons to most TIE Fighters, the quad lasers can one-shot the standard TIE LN. Its loadout of six proton torpedoes can be effective against larger ships. Most importantly, it has a compact hyperdrive and an astromech droid to aid in navigation. This gives the X-Wing a long-range raiding and strike ability that few other space superiority fighters can achieve without the use of a carrier on the battlefield. So the X-Wing serves with distinction for the Rebel Alliance and then the New Republic for decades. The E-Wing appears at some point after the establishment of the New Republic. Introduced by Freetech Inc., it is meant to be a possible replacement for the X-Wing or at least an alternative, as the Empire had new fighters like the TIE Interceptor out there, and eventually scarier TIE fighters, that could easily counter the X-Wing, so a counter to those counters would be conceived. Let's have a look at these ships side by side. We're going to stick with the T-65B X-Wing version, which is overwhelmingly the most common version of the X-Wing. We don't truly get an upgraded X-Wing of any note until long after the formation of the New Republic. The T-65B X-Wing has four in thrust engines, which give it a sublight speed rating of 100 megalites. That matches most TIE fighters. It has a nimble and tight fuselage with four spread out engines. This gives the X-Wings relatively good maneuverability. It has four time and back KX-9 laser cannons. These are on S-foils that extend out. They are pretty solid laser cannons, not the most powerful, but not weak either. These lasers can fire in rapid succession, in twos, or all four at once. If you ever played the old X-Wing games or Star Wars Squadrons, you'd know that firing these cannons together to surprise snipe the fighters with one shot is the preferred method. There are also two Coop X MG7 Proton Torpedo Launchers with six torpedoes available. These aren't great at taking out similar fighters, but they're very effective against larger, less maneuverable ships, and they pack quite a punch. This gives the X-Wings a more flexible engagement profile. X-Wings have the Chimpat Deflector Shield, which gives them the ability to survive several laser shots from something like a TIE Fighter. The Rebels and the New Republic valued their ships and pilots wanted them to come back alive so they could use them over and over again. Now for the E-Wing. Unfortunately, there are not yet any stats available for this version of the E-Wing that appears in Star Wars Ahsoka. I think we should, however, go ahead and substitute the old Legends E-Wing stats for a lot of the things, but we will go over the obvious differences between the canon E-Wing here and the Legends E-Wing. For the E-Wing, you'll notice the chassis of the fuselage is more massive compared to the X-Wing. This is a heavier starfighter and is capable of carrying more stuff, housing a larger power plant, and with more surface area. If you are into real-world flight physics, you could say that the E-Wing has more wing area and control surfaces, so therefore it is better in a planetary atmosphere, perhaps? The E-Wing also has these two massive ion engines here. This yields better acceleration than the X-Wing, and its satellite speed is rated at 120 megalites, which is 20% faster than the X-Wing, although not quite as fast as an A-Wing. I doubt the E-Wing is not quite as maneuverable in space as the X-Wing due to its engine configuration and placement. 
Now, yes, I know you guys are aware of the Legends E-Wing, which has three time and back IX-9 medium laser cannons. This E-Wing in Ahsoka just has two on the wings. Honestly, I'm kind of okay with that. The third laser cannon on the top would have interfered with the cockpit, but also left no external port for the astromech droid, which in Legends is apparently totally enclosed. But these lasers are heavier than the X-Wing's KX-9s. They probably can punch through shields and armor with far greater ease. Also like the X-Wing, it has two proton torpedo launchers, but with a massive loadout of 16 torpedoes compared to the X-Wing 6. That rivals the loadout of things like B-Wings, but this ship is still not quite as heavy as a B-Wing. I was just wondering if perhaps those torpedoes are a smaller version of the X-Wing's torpedoes. Also, the E-Wing has better armor than the X-Wing, along with deflector shields, so it is overall tougher. Both ships have the hyperdrive of similar rating. The astromech droid of the E-Wing is the newer R7 series, indicating it may be able to calculate hyperjumps faster or store more jump coordinates. If you add all this up, it does appear that the E-Wing is overall superior to the X-Wing. However, sheer ability does not always make for a better fighter. In Legend Star Wars, the E-Wing suffered a major problem. The Tabana gas, which is used to help power the wing lasers, degraded far too quickly over time, which rendered those lasers almost useless far too fast. This meant the lasers had to be serviced very often. Also, the R7 droids were quite a bit more expensive than R2 and R5 units, without much more benefit. By the time Freetech had fixed these problems, the B version of the E-Wing most New Republic pilots would have moved on from it, preferring their trusty old X-Wings. Overall, the E-Wing would be a more expensive fighter to build and maintain. Now there's a bit more. The tactics of the E-Wing would be different from the X-Wing. Remember how I concluded the X-Wing, although slower, is probably more maneuverable, and that changes everything. This means that the E-Wing is probably more vulnerable than an X-Wing in a dogfight, especially against a very maneuverable TIE fighter. Dogfights are not so much about speed, but more about being able to maintain a position behind the enemy fighter. It doesn't mean that the E-Wing cannot take out fighters. An excellent, simple, no-nonsense tactic for the E-Wing would be to go head-to-head -head with an enemy fighter on the attack, because it could take a few shots from the TIE fighter whereas the enemy fighter would not survive the frontal assault of the E-Wing. In this regard, the E-Wing would be used very much like the American P-38 Lightning in World War II. Since the Lightning had speed and firepower, and it's not particularly advantageous to dogfight, then you don't dogfight. You go in, attack, run away, turn around, rinse and repeat. This means, however, at least in one regard, the X-Wing is the better choice and that would be when defending or escorting other ships, especially capital ships. If you want to defend or fight in a relatively tight space, you can't go speeding and gallivanting all across the battlefield. It's better to stay in close where the speed doesn't count as much. I'm sure some of you guys in the comments will let me know of some other applications where the X-Wing might be a superior choice to the E-Wing. So in conclusion, I love the E-Wing, especially this version. I believe most of the time the E-Wing is superior to the X-Wing, at least until the X-Wing would get a major refit decades later, but in the macro or overall war strategy, it may not be the first choice due to its expense and other limitations, and in some but not all tactical situations the X-Wing is still preferred. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Please comment and tell me if you think that the E-Wing truly can replace the X-Wing, and why or why not. Also, feel free to share this video around and discuss with your friends. The two best ways to support the channel are through the Super Thanks comments by hitting the Super Thanks button below, and through patreon.com forward slash resurrected, where you can get videos, ad-free, CG renders, and a lot of Blender 3D assets I use for these videos. I sincerely thank the Patreons I already have very much, but the reality is I could really, really use the help as I put many hours into making these videos, and my Patreon following is startlingly low compared to similar channels. Right now it looks like I'll have to take other gigs just to make a living, although I would really prefer to focus on this channel full time, and I have some ideas that are burning to get out of my brain and into YouTube. So I would really love y'all's help on Patreon, and super thanks only if you can spare it, of course. Sharing this video around on Facebook, Reddit, Discord, servers, and other places will also be very helpful to me. 
All right, until next time, space friends.